It's been said, when you have a source of life, you are a source of life. Christy, I, um, I had this book made. I've been working on putting some notes and thoughts and letters to you in it. It's not done because life is, well, it's 2020. You stole my heart like a thief in the night. I don't have a fancy book. I just have folded up paper. <laughs> I love it though. Okay. Of unclean lips and soiled hands From the soil your wheat will rise We are dust with love that never dies Tyler was a ninth grade kid when I first met him Wearing that letterman jacket, coming in sweaty to youth group Asking me how to be light with light to others. You just want to know how can I how can I be light and how can I give life to other people? You are my shelter. You are my home. Flesh for my flesh on my bone. This moment is one I distinctly remember dreaming about for as long as the concept of romance has thrilled my heart. I remember dreaming about it in the back seat of our family car with eyes looking out the window. I remember dreaming about it as I stood at the altar with a few of the men beside me today. I remember dreaming of, it at ch of a church detailed enough to be familiar, yet vague enough to be mysterious. I remember dreaming of the music and the flowers and the emotions, and I remember dreaming of the beautiful woman walking down the aisle. With a veil over her face. Oh, the letdown when the dream ended just as the veil was being lifted. This moment is greater than all of my dreams combined. Yet this moment is one I struggle to understand. Much like Moses before the burning bush, the great I am called him to lead, serve, and love. But Moses trembled at the challenge. Moses in his mind was a murderous runaway with a stutter. How could he be a man who leads? Now I too stand in the presence of God, the Father, called call to lead, serve, and love. And while I am no murderer, I have done my share of running away. When I should have communicated, I did not. When I should have been consistent, I was not. When I should have been careful, I was not. In pursuit of the dream, I recklessly put my desire first and chose to be a boy instead of a man. Praise God for the miracle he's worked in my life. Praise God for the faithful men beside me who have loved me enough to speak truth and wisdom with love. Don't get up. <laughs> Praise God for my family and my friends who have loved me through it all. God has shown me a better life than I could have ever imagined, but it requires work. Marriage does not magically happen. Healthy homes are not wished into existence. Love must be chosen and sought after. Christy, I vow to you to love you every day, not simply with words, but with service and sacrifice. I vow to answer you when you call and run to your rescue and aid. I vow to build a home together where you and our children will flourish as God made you to be. I vow to drive us to church every Sunday and set the spiritual example for our home. Our house will serve the Lord. I vow to never let love become just a feeling. I vow to never let the sun go down on anger. No matter who's right or who's wrong, forgiveness and reconciliation will be sought after, not selfish validation. I vow to continue growing as a man. I will arm myself with good counsel. Tons of DIY videos from the internet and the truth of God's word. <laughs> I vow to choose you, protect you, lead you, serve you, and love you above all else. I want Tristan and Sadie to come stand by their mom. Come over here, buddy. 
Tristan, I vow to remind you of how strong you are and that strength is to be used to bless others. I vow to show you how a real man works, leads, and loves others. I vow to treat you not with anger or to teach you with anger, but to love you. I vow to always love dinosaurs, Spider-Man, and karate. Sadie, I vow to remind you how beautiful you are and that beauty is to be treasured and admired. I want to be the kind of man that you should marry someday. I vow to have daddy-daughter dates and show you my love more often. I vow to never be too proud to enjoy the things that you enjoy with you. To both of you, I vow to cuddle until cuddling is no longer cool. I vow to admit when I am wrong because adults are not always perfect and I want to show you what grace looks like. And I vow to choose you, protect you, lead you, serve you, and love you above all else. To say I will be perfect would be a lie and lies are not what homes are built on or what grows a family. I will fail, but I promise to be humble. I promise to learn and I promise to grow. As I write these vows, a song echoes in my head. My favorite line of the song sums up my heart for all of you. Home was a dream, one that I'd never seen until you came along. I love you. I feel like we should take a break. <laughs> I feel like I should have gone first. <laughs> I just want to say, in preparing to, to figure out what I was going to say on this day, I was on the airplane flying here to Dallas, and I was like, you know what, this would be a great time to figure out what I'm going to say in this moment. And so I got my iPad out, and I started writing down what I'm going to say, and then I realized the guy next to me was watching The Office on his iPad, and I feel I realized that's far more interesting than writing out a best man speech. One thing I'll never forget, I don't know if I've ever brought this up to you, but I will never forget the fact that after Katrina, when, um, after Katrina, when, when none of us knew what life was going to be like, our house was destroyed. We were, God, we were in North Mississippi, had no clue what we were going to come back to after losing our entire, uh, our entire home. And I get a phone call from this guy right here. He, the first person who called me as a sixth grade boy was this guy. And just check on me to make sure that I was okay. And that's one thing I've always held on to my entire life is knowing that even though we fought, even though we've had times we've probably hated each other and called each other names, I will never forget the fact that that was one of the first people outside of family who called to make sure that I was okay, that I was alive and breathing. Tyler, we have come a long way since meeting as those two people who were matched up on eHarmony. One of us having just paid an insane amount of money for a year-long subscription that had just begun, and the other refusing to even think of paying for a dating service so soon after a turbulent marriage. You begin the pursuit of me early on by finding me on social media after I ignored your messages on eHarmony. <laughs> We went from friendly conversations over Instagram to you finally getting the courage to ask me for my number to eventually meeting for the first time at a coffee shop on Denton Square. That first date had many ups. We bonded over our love for liter or classic literature and tacos and peppermint flavored ice cream and some downs, the hug incident, which you made me think you had no interest in me and that there would definitely be no second date. But then you asked me out again, and you showed up on time to my house. <laughs> and you still have never been late to anything you promised to be there for. <laughs> um, you opened my car door, which you still do every time to this day. <laughs> okay. 
You made me a dinner that you prepared with love, which you still do for me every time that I come over. <laughs> because let's face it, you're the better cook. <laughs> There were flowers on the table, which you still pick up to place in a vase on our special dinner dates at home, even when you're tired. You prayed over our food, and then you prayed over me as I was still in the midst of some hurt from my past. You still pray over me and with me as we have grown in God's love and grace together. You've never faltered in your pursuit of my heart. If you had told me two years ago that I would be where I'm at now, standing here with a man, who never speaks an unkind word to me or my kids. Um, who never lies to us or gives us the silent treatment. My heart has known. Who never makes us feel less than worthy of love. And who never goes to bed at night without telling me he loves me. I would have told you that type of man did not exist. I had given up on love and the dream I had as a little girl to find a godly man like my dad, who always treated his family with respect and an unconditional agape love. But most days just hold on tight. For there's a time for darkness, honey. But and then the Lord brought you into my life. You were an unexpected surprise, a breath of fresh air. I truly believe our Savior is in the business of redemption. And you've been the best part of my redemption story. Christy has shared years loving others towards life and hope, whether it's kids in a classroom or underneath your roof. Because she was marked years ago, like Tyler, with the source of life, Jesus Christ. church and gave up his life for her. You allow the Lord to work in, your, in you daily to sacrifice your own comforts for me and the kids. You serve us with a true servant's heart. You pray for us. You speak the Lord's truth into our lives and remind us every day that we are valued as his children. My kids adore you, not because you give them nice gifts or take them on fun outings but because from the first moment you met them, you've poured yourself out for them. Listen to them, spend time with them, and show them how fathers should love and lead. I cannot wait to watch you as a stepdad. I love you the most for how you love them, and I confidently and eagerly step into this marriage with you. In faith, I take you as my wedded husband to share with you in God's plan for our lives together. I commit to you this day all that I am, I will love, honor, and cherish you always. I will look to you as a partner and leader in our home. I pledge to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I vow to always be by your side as your number one support and to always keep the presence and peace of the Lord in our home. I will love you in sickness and health, in poverty and in wealth, in sorrow as in joy, and will be true to you by God's grace trusting in him and his perfect plan as long as we both shall live. <laughs> so crown him in your morning crown him in your laughter crown him when it all turns dark crown him when you bury and crown him when you marry Crown him when your faith finds a spark Crown him for he's faithful Crown him for he's worthy Crown him for he is good Crown him for his promises Caught through the blindness 
hands of children that have barely understood the beauty that has come, the beauty yet to come, the beauty that is yours.